give you the same advice I gave another C-level executive who is navigating some really big obstacles. Let's dive in. I was talking with a, a C-level executive recently who was leading through a ton of internal and external uh, adversity. I thought I would share with you what I shared with him. See, the main point I want you to get from this is simple. How you respond to adversity is far more important than the adversity itself. Let me repeat that so it really sinks in. See, how you respond to adversity is far more important than the adversity itself. And I say that because every leader at some point is gonna face some adversity. And when leaders call me up or they bring me their challenges, right? I'll, tell you, I'll be honest with you, I don't personally care about the challenge. What I care about and what I help them navigate is how they respond to the challenge. See, the challenge itself doesn't matter. What matters is your response to it. Let's zoom out for a second and talk about some of the challenges facing everyone. Take the supply chain, for example, right? It's been, it's been a challenge for everyone, personally and professionally. In business, digital transformation is accelerating. You know what? It shows no sign of slowing down. We hear about technologies like 5G, blockchain, and IoT. And what they're doing is they're speeding up the adoption of artificial intelligence. And as a result, right, companies are beginning to, if they haven't already, starting to redesign their processes on how they collaborate internally and externally with their customers. Now, those are some global challenges. Tomorrow, it's gonna to be something else. See, the adversity itself doesn't matter. What matters is how you respond to it. Let me give you now an example of the closer to home. Right? A medical uh, building client of mine adopted AI a few years ago. They were, they were a leading adopter, right? And, and, and they did it with the purpose of trying to, to uh, efficiently process more claims, to scale the number of claims they could handle, and to just simply provide a better experience for the clients. That digital transformation alone drove a massive amount of change in how that business operated, which caused a ton of adversity for the business leaders to manage. And I will tell you the same thing I told them. The train left the station. Stop wasting energy on the massive changes and refocus on how you lead your team through it. Was it easy? Hell no. Was it necessary? Absolutely. Another CEO I work with has an expression that I just absolutely love. He's created a whole platform around the saying, change or die. He has the courage to keep changing. In fact, the fear of not changing drives him and his executive team. That model alone has catapulted that company's success. Change or die. What if you were given that choice? Could you change when change mattered most? Talk about adversity, right? See, dealing with adversity is what business is all about. That is just a cold hard fact. Let me, let me now circle back and share my advice with the C-level executive who reached out to me. Like I said earlier, the specifics of the situation, they don't matter. What matters is his response. And when he reached out, I could tell right away that he was focused on the worst case scenario. That's a normal reaction. After all, we all do this. Here's the advice I gave him. First, stay calm and focus on what you can do today, right? See, most people spend all their cycles replaying what happened or overanalyzing what could happen, that it just consumes them. And the result becomes like fear on steroids. Any confidence you once had is gone. Quickly replaced with constant worry and sleepless nights. And these negative thoughts are gonna eat away at you and they're gonna paralyze you and the your team. The reality is this, you cannot move forward if you're agonizing about the past or worrying about the future. The present moment is all there ever is. This is your opportunity as a leader to step up. Your team is watching you. Pay attention because your team is paying attention to what you do or you, what you fail to do. This is not a time to lose your shit. You need to stay calm and composed. Your job is to ensure that you and your team are laser focused on what could be accomplished today. Not tomorrow, not next week, but today. See that mindset shift, right? You notice the energy shift in that? That redirects everybody's energy where it's needed most right here in the present moment. Next, you have to passionately believe that whatever you're dealing with is possible to solve. See, everything starts with the belief that something is possible and that belief must come from you, the leader. If you believe there's a solution, I have all the confidence in the world that you're gonna find it. 
regardless of how difficult something may appear, if you believe it is even remotely possible to achieve, you will muster up enough courage to take one bold step forward. And the moment you do, trust me, others are gonna follow you. They have to see you having the courage to move forward with an unwavering belief that it's all gonna work out. See, if you doubt the direction forward, guess what? So will your team. Don't run from this. Instead, lean into it. You accepted a leadership position for moments just like this. Adversity is not something to run from. It's something to run to. It's your time to lead. The doorbell rang. Time to answer the door. Okay, the next thing I share with him is this. I think it's, it's important. Don't be embarrassed to struggle. See, there's no shame in navigating something difficult. Don't run from it. Instead, embrace the struggle. The struggle is always temporary. I see way too many leaders wishing things were easier. Stop. Just stop. If it was easy, the business wouldn't need you. The struggle is where your legacy is made. You got in this position because you're good at what you do. This isn't your first rodeo. This isn't your first challenge. This wasn't your first obstacle. You think back to, to, to a previous challenge you had. Remember how dire that situation was initially? You know what? You somehow figured it out. Hello? This is what we call experience. The situation in front of you is no different. It's time to dust off your creative workaround skills and put them to work. It's time to teach your team the same skills you've mastered. The leadership challenge is not a lack of resources. It's teaching your team how to use the resources they already have. And you know what? You're really good at this. I then reminded him of something that we all do when faced with adversity. You think about it, it's back to the basics. We start by asking good questions. I don't know about you, but I certainly don't have all the answers. But guess what? I am really good at asking questions. Questions lead to answers. Start by just challenging deeply held assumptions. Force yourself and others out of traditional thinking. I'm a big Einstein fan, as many of you know, and like Einstein said it best, you cannot solve problems with the same thinking that caused them. I just, I just love that saying, right? Think about that, right? The first thing I do when faced with adversity is I just start asking questions, right? Asking effective questions gives me an opportunity to begin to reframe and redefine the problem into something that can be achieved. See, good questions are my way of breaking things down right, into small enough components that they don't feel as heavy. I believe the art of leadership is to remove the heavy feeling others have about a perceived obstacle. If you can make a situation seem lighter, your team will begin to make progress, progress at solving. I guarantee it. See, when you feel like giving up, and we all do, I want you to remember that you're only one idea away. Breakthroughs often happen when you feel like you're hitting that breaking point. I want you to let your frustration become like more of an invitation to just stay the course. This is when, when you need to reach out to others that you trust. Who can seed you with ideas? Who can provide a light on the path forward? Who can help you overcome a perceived obstacle? Look, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. Adversity is hard. Leadership is not for the faint of heart. Overcoming obstacles isn't easy. Let me remind you that it's what you're paid to do. My friend and, uh, and mentor, Dr. Karen Monroy, I just love her, right? She has a, she has a saying that I, that I use all the time, and her saying is this, put a pin in it. See, when you feel even the slightest bit lost, she encourages others to visualize this map and pin their current location. Don't worry about what you did or failed to do. Wherever you are at this moment is your starting point. Just start from that point and stay open to any guidance you and you're going to receive guidance from multiple different sources. I mean, you got to be willing to experiment with different approaches that are going to lead you from that point to your destination. Now imagine if your team applied that same approach. If you want to develop courageous leaders in your business who can effectively adapt to whatever challenges emerge or whatever adversity hits, go to sealevelfreedom.com. And I will show you how to transform your leaders into growth champions so they free up your time to do what you love most, growing the business and increasing its valuation. If you're not at that stage yet, I'd like to buy you a copy of my book, Freedom to Experiment, 
how to ignite a new love of energy, focus, momentum in yourself and your team. Follow the link in the description. You know what? I'll personally sign a copy for you. Okay, if you like what I shared today, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, comment below related to your business, and of course, subscribe. Because each week I'm sharing content to help you and your team embrace change, focus your efforts, and accelerate results. Remember this, you're just one idea away. Talk to you soon.